Yeah. Hey, how you doing? I'm just setting up, so I'm just logging on to everything. So I'm going to put you on, put yourself on mute. Um, oh gosh, right. And here we go. Okay, darling, right. So I now need to go to here. There we go, and then to here, Facebook. Okay, there we go. Let me just do this and. Next. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Two minutes. Oh. I'm just getting Facebook up. Hi, Yvonne. Good evening, good evening, good evening and welcome, welcome, welcome to After Dark Conversations. This is your girl Yvonne Michelle and we are here live and direct. For those of you who are on the www. welcome welcome and welcome again and for those of you who are just joining us on facebook good evening good evening now guys once we, we're going to do some housekeeping guys do remember to put all your comments on the thread in facebook so that we can so that we can indeed uh, have all of your thoughts everything come through Guys, 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 the Zoom room, the room of love is, is filling up, is filling up. Now, the room of love is only going to be open until half past 10 because 
we have to have some order in the place. See? So those of you guys got to get in here on time. Everything, <laughs> everything is about time. So I'm just going to make sure that I am logged in and it is working on Facebook. Are we here? Yes, we are. We are live on Facebook, which is great. So good evening, Facebook. Good evening to those of you who are joining us this evening. Good evening to the panel. I'm going to come to you guys um, shortly just to say hello before we get started. And I can see that uh, Kellyon is here this week. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. You were missed last week. You were really missed. So I'm so glad to see you back this week. So guys, so guys, are we ready for the conversation tonight? Oh yes, 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 yes. We are talking love tonight. Well, we're always talking about love and relationship. Let me get myself comfortable this evening. We have got a packed show. I'm super, super, super excited. Lots of things are happening. Lots and lots and lots of things are happening around. And so um, developments and it's like oh, my brain. I can't cope. Can't I can't cope with it all. Right. So so Lorraine Bailey, you said, Oh, have you not got the link, darling? Okay, so hold on. Um the link, okay, let me just pop the link in. Veronica, have you got the link there? Okay, so the link is gonna go into the um into Facebook. So don't worry, ladies, you'll be able to come in. Good evening, Jenny Lyons, good evening, Barbara, good evening, Veronica. Good evening, Lorraine, and all of the people who are watching. Now, what I want you to do, guys, guys, we want this show. Listen to me. Listen to me. We have the opportunity of taking this show onto the screens, right? So, yes, we're in lockdown now, but we have an opportunity. So, what I need you to do is I need you to share this on your network and get your friends, your family, your frenemies, anybody that is into relationships to get involved in this show. This show is for us and it's by us. All right, this relationship show is completely different to what you see on the mainstream TV. So I need you guys to share, share, and share again. Yeah, so everybody, guys, because this is our show and we want it to go far. Yeah, so we need to get people watching we need to get people engaged we need to get people on board so that's everybody whether i've mentioned your name in facebook or in the zoom room the room of love send your this out share it with all of your friends and that includes instagram snapchat twitter um ticket talk <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I, I'm not in the top tick, 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 <sighs> I'll do one of those <sighs> don't rush things another day. But we need people to be on board of this. And then we're going to start, we're going to start tonight's show. So we've done the housekeeping, guys. Do remember, if you've got something to say, put your hand up or there's a um, some buttons that you can that you can put in the, the Zoom room. Those of you who have questions that are on Facebook, what I'm asking you to do is put your question, but put a bit of what we're talking about on it so we know what you're referring to in your comments. All right? So, guys, um, I'm waiting for uh, some men. We're, we're looking for them. Why, Kellyanne? You are setting a good example because you are on time. And I cannot see any of the other men. Men, it's not good for you to be late. That's a bit of a sexist statement there, isn't it? <laughs> you are not supposed to, it's us who's supposed to be late. We have more to do. We got hair to do, we got makeup to do, we got to find the right shoes, we, you know, we got to make sure the underwear fit right for the dress, it don't hitch up, hitch up underneath the clothes. We got to think about so many things. And you guys just need to put on a nice, as long as it's iron, 
and it's clean, the armpit especially, that is clean. And you iron, you press the trousers and sometimes you have a little seam down the front. Or is that old school? Anyway, pair of shoes, but we have, so it's, 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 it's for us to be late, right? Right, it's for us to be late sometimes, okay? So Kelly on set the, pre the president. Right, so I'm gonna come to the, the panel. We're just gonna say a quick hello and then we are gonna go into the show. I'm super excited. So as, right, Kelly on, I can see your mouth is still moving. So I'm gonna go somewhere else and let you do what you're doing, all right? Okay, so, um, oh, we've got two, right. So Carol Lorraine is Carol Lorraine and Lorraine is Lorraine, all right? So when I'm referring, because we've got two Lorraines, so Carol Lorraine and Lorraine. Is that all right? All right. So I'm going to come to Lorraine first. Hello, lovely. Hi, uh, good, thank you. Awesome. Marvellous. That's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear. So, so Lorraine, you're in the in in the room of love this week. I'm so glad you're here because your comments. I'm are so always good. in the room of love. Up here, up here, up here, up here. Love. All right. <laughs> That's what I want to hear. I love it, love it, love it, love it. All right, so um, good evening. Thank you for joining. And I'm sure you're going to have a lot of input tonight. So mm -hmm. I'm going to move to, uh, I'm going to go to Veronica. Hello, Veronica. Oh. Veronica? I'm... Yes, I'm here. I'm here now. Hi, good evening, everyone. Good evening. How are you doing, girl? I'm good, I'm good. Wonderful, I'm good. wonderful, wonderful. We've got more people coming into the Zoom room. Okay, thank you for joining us. Ooh. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you for joining us, Veronica. I'm sure you're gonna have input. And I know that uh, Veronica is gonna be helping to keep the flow of Facebook going as well. So thanks, Veronica. Right, so Carol Lorraine, I'm coming into you. Good evening. Unmute yourself. Hello, love. Good evening, darling. How are you? Hi, that? everybody. Sorry? You good? Yeah, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Fantastic. I'm good. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, Kelly on's mouth is... Are you all right now? Are we good? <laughs> yeah, man. We're good, man. All right. Bye. How are you? Good back in the house. Good to be back in the house. Yes. We've got the man in the house. Yes, that's what we like. All right, thank you for joining us. We did miss you. As I said, we did miss you last week. So it's good to have you back and have your input. So I'm sure you're going to have a lot to say tonight. And <laughs> we're going to jump over to Cheryl. Hello. Good, good evening. Good evening, lovey. Oh, I know. You're looking <laughs> very lovely. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you're looking lovely, my darling. Thank you. <laughs> oh, so thank you for joining. Thank you for joining us tonight. So we're going to have a good time tonight. I'm sure there's going to be more people coming on this, into the Zoom room um, shortly, but we are going to um, move on. Good evening, Anthony. Is that Omina? I can't pronounce your surname. I'm sorry. Please forgive me, but thank you, sir, for joining us. Um, Shalomi, are you coming into the Zoom room? Because your space is here. I think the link is on the chat. So do come in. Right, and so we are looking for at least three men, at least three men to join us in the Zoom room. Also, what I'm going to say before we get started is next week... I might leave it for two weeks, but what I want is next week is that we have a panel of pure men. Because it, I want to address the men next week. There is something um, I want us to look at in terms of um, compatibility and why things are the way that they are. And I want the room filled with men because it's going to be a man's show. All right. This is the intention for next week so that we, the women, can ask the questions. So we want the men in the chat room. All right? Okay, lovely. So good evening to everybody that's watching. Right, so let's, let's go full speed ahead. Oh, Ruth, uh, the Liberty Coach is here. Hold on. Let me just 
can you unmute? Good evening. Yes. Evening. Thank you for evening, joining us. Okay, lovely. Right, we're gonna. I just wanted to say hello to everybody, and we're gonna move nice. on uh, now. So today, what we are talking about is compatibility. It is compatibility. Now. I want you to start thinking about the things that you think are in the things that are important that make compatibility important. Let me explain that. So we've over the past few weeks, we've been, we've looked at love languages. We've looked at sex. We've looked at all these things as singletons and, and, and most of us on this panel are single and there are a lot of single people in Facebook. There may be lots of people on um, the www dot that are single also, right? Um, we do have married people as well who come to advise us and I'm very happy for the married folks to have their input in this because there are insights that we may not have because we are single and we think differently. We think as single people, whereas those who are in relationships should be thinking about their relationship and not as a, not as a single person, all right? So we wanna look at now what it is, because one of the things that I recognize, especially for us, and I'm gonna talk from my own experience, it's not for everybody, but I think that as an older, as you get, as you get more mature and you have experienced different relationships, sometimes we can get so needy for the better, for, for the use of a better word that we forget compatibility and that we just want to be with somebody, right? I know many, I'm not talking about myself here because no, but I know that there are many of us who would just be in a relationship to be in a relationship, not necessarily because that person is compatible. So we're going to start to look at what makes your partner, what you think makes your partner compatible. Now I've got, um, I think it's five steps. There are five, th there are five key things in my head, but what I want to get to grips with is what you think about compatibility, what you think in your, and go back to your past relationships. What made you compatible? And I know that, that there will be a couple where the relationships ended for other reasons, but most of us here and most of us on the thread our relationship ended because it ended. There was stuff, but it ended. So what is it now that's gonna make this new person the right person? Because one of the reasons why we are doing this is so that we can work on ourselves. It's not really to, for us to be working or pointing the finger at anybody else that's here. And that goes for those on Facebook as well. Even though they don't want to speak, this is to challenge our mentality, our thinking of how we think and feel about ourselves and what we want. It's intentional. Because if you want to get the right partner, you've got to set the right intention. Are we in agreement? Are we in agreement? Can I see some love, some thumbs up, some hearts on Facebook? Can I get some thumbs up in the, in the Zoom room if you agree? If you don't agree, thumbs down, right? Everybody in the Zoom room is agreeing and I'm getting some, some kind of love on the, on the Facebook. So guys, those of you who are on Facebook, don't just sit there and be pretty. Because you see what happened when you sit there and be pretty, you just get passed by. You have to be... You have to start getting involved in the conversation. Come on now. Come on now. Oh, Rose Mupp. Is it Rose Mupp? Rose Mupp is a relationship coach. So then you will have a lot to contribute to tonight in the conversation. So thank you for joining us here. Right here. Thank you very much. Right. Barbara says they have to first and foremost want the same thing out of a relationship or it's just a non-starter. Okay, so let's start the conversation. Let's go. Right, so compatibility. What are the things that you think 
um, are important in order for you to be compatible with the person that you want to be with. Anybody can come in now from, from, from this panel. Good evening, Shalomi. Oh, she's gone again. You all right, Shalomi? How are you doing? Okay, we can't hear Shalomi. Shalomi will work it out. We'll, we'll work that out. Okay. Ooh, okay. Is that you? Okay. 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 So Rose Mop is saying, I found out that we need to heal ourselves first before getting into another relationship. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Shalomi, I'm not sure. We can hear, I can hear some things coming from you. Uh, but we need to be able to put you on. Can you put yourself on silent? Oh yeah, here we go. So right, I've done it. I've got you. I've got you. I've got you. I've got you. Okay, lovely. All right. So who who wants to go first? Who wants to jump in about compatibility? Or am I going to have to pick somebody? Like what we do at school. I'll come in. Thank you. Right. So from my point or perspective, regards to being compatible with someone in a relationship, these are, this is where you know you can have a life first off with minimal conflict because you get on you know you are two different people but you have some things that are similar i know they say opposites attract and some people can have very fruitful and lasting relationships in that way but it works for mm -hmm. them but in 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 my um you know from my viewpoint you know compatibility is that you're getting on with someone you're able to communicate have chats, go out, enjoy certain functions. They go off and do their things. You go off and do your things. And there's just some nice harmony and good vibes and trusting and all those kinds of good, wonderful things. And you just generally get along very, very well, like grow together or one grows and the other one, you know, comes up after. But there's also that support encouragement within that relationship in all the things that each one is doing so if one's got a project you're supporting them talking to them about what's you know like their little confident you've got project ideas etc you're bouncing off and do you know what i mean even if you've got going to the ascots and you're picking your hat you know they're involved in that you know not just what you are going on through the outside but you kind of get a little dip, you deeper with even on your spiritual side, the spiritual growth, your faith levels, where you're at, if you're up or down, if you're grieving or happy or whatever. This person that you're compatible with kind of goes with the ebbs and the flows of your life to be there, your support, your anchor, and all those kinds of, you know, wonderful things to help you go from day to day. That's it in a little bit of a nutshell. So if someone can add, that would be wonderful. Because that was, that was good. That was, that was, I hope you guys were listening to that. And I hope you guys are taking notes here because out of the two, there's five points that I have in terms of compatibility that make a relationship work. And mm. you touched on two. There, that's why I was smiling. I was right. I was trying to write. So you've touched on two. So I, because I want to see where we are. Um, I want to see um, how we're thinking. Remember, guys, from last week, I was saying to you, I'm actually, when you guys are talking, I'm actually making notes. I am kind of collating some information because this is this is actually helpful, and then something might come out of it. It's information mm -hmm. that that we are collating for ourselves we are we are people of age looking for a relationship and so these are key things that we are going to need moving forward so who else wants to who wants to come in and carry on from what ruth said 
so Ruth, I got uh, support and encouragement, I and involvement, and then we've got uh, you, you touched on spiritual growth, which is one of the one of the keys. Well. Yeah, there was others, but you know, this is a platform of sharing and learning. You know, I'm just starting the the, the, the you know the conversation. There's definitely more, you know, because each one of us would have experienced that with somebody at some point in life, mm -hmm. and really have taken some learnings from that to know, say, even though the relationship ended, these are the qualities that I'm looking for. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? When you're, you're moving on to the next one, and those are definitely factors because, you know, we're transitioning people, so, yeah. Okay, lovely. Who, who's go, who, I, I would like to say something, if I can. Oh, yeah, coming in the rain. <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to say that I agree with um, what Ruth said, 100%. And for me, that, that is one of the, compatibility is one of the reasons why for me you have to have a friendship first because if you think about it if you've got like I've got a friend who I've known since I was five um so what's that 42 years we've had a friendship and the reason why me and her get on so well is because we're like-minded and we've grown together so it's the same it's the same sort of friendship you need to have in a relationship you have to have the friendship to find out whether you're compatible in the first place. Because sometimes it could even just be simple things like music. You know, there's no point in, for me, being with a man that only likes reggae when I like Afro house and Afro beats. We're never gonna wanna go out together. Do you know, sometimes it's not just about um, some of the points that Ruth made. The smaller things as well that would have a, an impact for me because I like I like socialising and if I couldn't be with somebody that doesn't, I can't hear you. We can't hear you. I keep forgetting to take myself off mute. So that social aspect is really important. You're touching another. You're, so you've actually touched on another point that that oh, yeah. So this is great. So that social of being able to go out and enjoy and have that compatibility is really, really key. All right, so what I'm gonna say, guys, those of you who are on Facebook, we have three, maybe four spaces available. I know that we've got four minutes left to fill the spot, but I really would like some men to jump in. I know that Kelion doesn't mind being here on his own. <laughs> You can hold it together, brother. You can. But we want some men in the Zoom room. So if you are a man and you would like to come in the Zoom room, do not stand on the sidelines. Get involved. Come on, guys. Don't be scared. We don't bite in the, in the Zoom room. We don't bite at all. Okay, so social. Right. Oops. Right, so. Who's going next? Cheryl. Can I? Yeah, come in. For, for me, it has to be um, communication. I, I can't have a relationship with someone that doesn't tell me or talk to me if there's a problem or, um, or sulks. I, I need communication. Communication is key with me. So that, that would be the first one, for sure. Um, I need... Um, someone who is open to trying new things as well. Yeah, people that, you know, especially when they get older, they tend to get quite rigid in what they like and what they don't like. But I like, you know, to try new things. So those two are, are key for me as well. Hello? You forgot to unmute yourself again, Yvonne. Yeah, I'm going to leave it on. <laughs> I'm going to leave it on. Okay. So you're saying communication is a key factor for you in terms of compatibility. Mm. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Rose, uh, we've got some comments on the thread. I thought we had, but we're not. Oh, Barbara's saying, come on, man. We want to hear your opinion. It matters. <laughs> Absolutely. Come on. Come on, guys. You can't okay. just sit by the wayside. So, uh, so, because I'm saying to guys, I'm going to call in Kelly on. Come on, Kelly on. Might as well. Um, what Lorraine said just now was actually very important. She said that she's known a friend since when she was five. 
so it's 42 years. We're, we're talking about spending time with somebody until you know that making a commitment will be the right thing to do. Now, um, I, I, I actually agree with everything that everyone said. Um, I've actually gravitated to all of it. But um, I think, you know, with regards to compatibility, you obviously need to make sure that that person is that person. You guys are going to have to go through some ups and downs, disappointments, good times, bad times, and all that, to see how the person responds to certain situations, to, to then know what's going to happen when you do get into a relationship. And that's why I, I value what Lorraine just said. She said that you know, I've known this person for a long time, so this person's my friend. So unfortunately, we're rushing into... Uh, and, and I might be, I'm trying not to come off the subject so much of what you're saying, but I really gravitate to what she said. That it's, so, it's so key, you know, to being compatible with somebody that you've got to take your time about it. You have to be kind of patient uh, enough to know that, yep, this is the person and I know what, what I'm getting myself into. So really, I agree with what everyone said, but I think for me, that's the most important thing. Sometimes we, I think people say after like six or nine months, yeah, I, I, I know that this is the right person. Yeah, I mean, it might have worked for one or two people. Not a lot, you know, especially if it's Hollywood. <laughs> it's like two, three months and then they get themselves in there. So, um, yeah, you, you've got to go to the grave and back <laughs> with the person that you'd like to spend your whole life with. Or else that's going to be an issue as well. That's that's it really for me. Yvonne. Yvonne. Key point there. <laughs> key point. The key point there, I think, um, and it and it's it is kind of where the the conversation I think needs to go this week because in previous weeks we have talked about you know the whole aspect of the love language we've talked about we've touched on sex we haven't really gone into it but we've touched on sex you know how important is it when do we introduce it and this is the reason one of the reasons why and i'm glad that the rain said what she said about friendships because can you really form a friendship with a person in a matter of weeks a real a real connected friendship within a matter of weeks. Who's coming in? You can come, you can come in. Oh, we've got, so Lorraine, I'm going to go Lorraine, then I'm going to go Shalomi. Yes, I think you can. Well, for me, I know I can, because I met, I met someone last year. We hit it off, a male. We hit it off. We are not, uh, sexually attracted to each other so we haven't we, we're not in a relationship as in girlfriend and boyfriend but we hit it off the moment we met and we we have become really really close friends so i'm just saying to what you just said yes you can i think you can become friends quite quickly okay uh, so i'm going to pose another question to you in that friendship mm -hmm. do you believe that sex would change that um i don't know because we don't we don't when we met we got on so well we went on a date right. we went on a few dates and then we both realized although we really get on we really like each other we, we don't have that sexual connection so but i can't answer that question because we're not attracted to each other that way we're okay. attracted on a friendship level Okay, so that's your friend, and I get that totally. I get that. The reason why I'm asking is because in previous weeks when we've been all talking, you know, the general consensus is you can have sex whenever you want, and which is true because we're grown, we can. But we all know that sex changes things. Mm -hmm. It does change things. And so in terms of what we are saying in terms of compatibility, and how we are interacting with opposite sex. If we put, like we have friendships and the friendships could last, why is it that the, why is it that the friendships of the sexual kind 
doesn't necessarily last. Are we introducing sex too early? I'm just posing the question. I can see eyes are looking up and the question and searching and stuff. So before we go, I can see hands going up, but give me one minute because Shalomi was next. After okay. Shalomi's Kelly on, and then we'll go, we'll go. Thank you for your answers though, Lorraine. Thank you for that. Shalomi, come in. Oh, right, you're gonna have to unmute, that's it. <clears throat> yeah, good evening, guys. Um, I believe relationship is a step of faith. It's a step of faith. It's going into something the unknown with a person that you know nothing about. People are great pretenders, right? You cannot know a person even in 20 years because people are together for 40 years and they divorce or 30 years and they divorce. I believe it's a mindset because we are at this age. We are not... Um, 18, 17 or 16 or more. We have made our lessons because I don't believe in mistakes. I believe in life lessons. So we have learned, you understand? So for people to say, I have to get to know that person, you cannot know, so situation will reveal people. You can, have, you, can, you can know people for a long time, you realize these people wasn't even friend with me. That's how life is. They don't have your back like how you think they did or you did. So in a relationship, two people have to have the same mindset to say, you know what, this is what I want. Yeah, I have the last relationship left in me. If you have the last thing left in you, you're gonna work at it, all right? We are different individuals. What I find is a lot of men is sexually available. Mentally, they are not. Spiritually, they are not. Emotionally, they are not. And most of them financially, they are barely. Right? Just barely. Right? So at the end of the day, I believe at this point in a lot of people's life, they have to look for what do you want? Do you want somebody that you can spiritually connect with, emotionally, mentally? Because what I see, there's a lot of 50 odd year old boys and there are a lot of 40 odd year old boys out there. They are not grown. They're still talking about the strip club. They're still like, you understand, they're into so many boys things. That's in my opinion. What I think when you're a boy, you do boy things. When you're a man, you're grown. But they are into hanging out with the boys boys going there going so lots of them is not ready for what you want so to me you have to have the same mindset what you're going to spend every weekend with your friends because friends things to me now i have a man yeah i still have my friend but now i have a man right so i won't be doing all the friend things as i used to because now i've got me a man that's my mentality so if I go with a guy that thinks, oh, I have to go to the bar and drink, or I have to go football, or I have to go on a weekend with my friends, for me, it's going to be a problem. So as I said, it's just establishing what you want, set a standard, live by it. Yeah. And if you're willing to compromise what you really want in a relationship, you will get anything because if the ocean you're going to swing with the breeze, then you're going to say you want this kind of guy, but because this kind of guy that you like, don't like what you like, you're going to compromise your happiness, you. And if you can be happy, happy alone and unhappy with someone, you realize it's not worth it. So in my opinion, I believe it's a mindset. Two people have to have, we are old, we're not young people. Like, we are old, man, the fountain is drying up. So, oh, we can't spend time trying to get to know each other. There's no such thing. You understand? There is no, we are stuck in certain ways. Yeah, and you have to talk. Yeah, and that is what I realized. People don't have conversation. They skip around things. They sugarcoat it. They let it look pretty. And then it's, you're talking to somebody to six months and you realize you don't have a clue who you are talking to because they sugarcoat everything. So I think mindset, set a standard, ask questions straight up. Don't, we are old. Like ask questions from the first day you can ask questions don't waste a second date on somebody that you could ask the question from the first date and that's just my opinion i thank you that for that shinobi i can say that while you were talking that there were some things going on in the thread and you've got a lot of people a lot of women are saying yeah do you believe that shinobi yeah 
um, we've got Desmond Edwards who says compatibility is good, but it won't work unless the person has got morals. And, and that's where Desmond's coming from. Thank you for your comment there, Desmond. I like that. Um, again, you've got a lot of people saying that they agree with you, Shalomi. They do. Uh, when, when I was listening to you, I just had this vision of a, um, you know, when they say you can't put, a square peg in a round jar yeah it's yeah. round i don't know how to say a round hole a round yeah. hole a square peg in a round hole sometimes in relationships this is what happens and so you find because i'm just going on by what um shalomi was saying so you'll find that you have that person who has getting everything in you've got the person who is the square um that has their way of doing things but the person that they're with is the circle and so one of them is getting everything that they need where the other one is not fulfilled does that make sense and i do have a diagram to show you that as well and it's funny how that came up <laughs> that shalomi said it um in terms of what in terms of what we're looking for so sometimes we waste a lot of time in my opinion in relationships that we shouldn't really be in because we're not compatible but we try to fit the square the square peg in a round hole does that make sense does that make sense guys if you if that makes sense please show some love please show some love um okay <laughs> Barbara Caraman, she's on it tonight. Yes, girlfriend. <laughs> Put them in the come on, because Tony Cox is in the Facebook thread and she's asking him, get she's telling him, get in there, Tony. You're needed. Hello. Because you are a panel member after all. So yes, Tony, the I believe the information is on the comment thread. So thank you very much for your comment, Shalomi. I'm gonna go over to Kelly on. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, just want to touch on what Sean was saying just now, um, with regards to asking questions, being open, um, just go straight in there. Um, in terms of marriage these days, yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, it's not. There's not a lot of marriages. There's maybe more divorce. And in terms of traditions, morals, and values, what the guy said on the thread, things have changed. Things have changed marginally. And it's um, now trying to find that space between yourself uh, and that person you're trying to have a relationship with. That's why I said, I, if you can recall, some weeks back I was talking about Will Smith and, and Jade, um, Jade Smith, where, um, Jada, Jade, yeah, Jada, Jade, sorry, where I, I like their relationship because they made an agreement between themselves, which doesn't necessarily sound religious, might be sound more spiritual than than anything but it's an agreement between two people but another thing as well um she said to go into a relationship blindly because you just you know you just will never know that person now i was a little bit troubled about that comment um you know i mean this is luke chapter 6 verses 40 a blind man leads a, a blind man leads a blind man i mean even scripture would, would kind of question that that you know to to do anything apart from blind faith to that aspect you're trusting in a god that will lead you into green pastures but if we're talking about a natural person itself um that's a bit of a tricky one for me okay uh what i'd say though this is supposed to be every seven years somebody's supposed to um kind of change um change their mindset with their thinking in some way or another so it's that's something to have on board as well. That what you, who you are today might be different in seven years' time. Uh, so there's, there's some things that you need to kind of take into consideration, hoping that um, if somebody has changed or evolved or moved on, that you can also move on with them uh, if you're mature enough. Um, uh, and just one other point. Yeah, I know that. But what I'm saying there, I think it's, there's going to be so much comments to make on that one. But it was when you were talking with Lorraine about um, about friendship, 
and obviously the whole subject about sex is that you know she obviously met this person and they get on really well like you can meet somebody and just be great friends with them but it's, it's something else though to be with that person 24 7 you know that's another level of friendship and i think that's what we're talking about that's why i say that it takes time so i would say two or three years now it might sound long to you but for me because i've done it i've done it with, with somebody already to know that i don't think i can be that person because i literally was in and out with this person for two three years and i'm like i don't see that um because of certain traits that i was actually seeing great person but it just seems to be things that just doesn't seem to want to shift and if i had decided in six months yeah i want to be with that person I'm just glad that within three years, it's like, nah, that's not going to happen. You know? um, yeah, that's what I want to say. Unmute, unmute, Yvonne, unmute, unmute, unmute. I'm unmute. <laughs> okay. Do you know why I keep muting? It's because sometimes I get feedback here. It's a bit much, but don't, I, I just wanted to ask you, Kelly, on, I just wanted to be clear. So the person that you was in the relationship with, you was in a relationship for three years, is that right? Yeah, it's um, a, a solid three years. I was kind of in and out for like, well, almost not three years yet, it'll be three years in, like, let's say September, you know, uh, we've been together for, for, a, for, a, for, for, for a few years. And it kind of started off like, okay, it started off good, it was, was, was great. And then it was like, oh, okay, there's certain things that need to be addressed here. Or, okay, everybody is in a place of growing and stretching. And, you know, I could see that this person needs growth in this area. And that's when you kind of exercise patience and that thing where, you know, you just see somebody go through their own growth. Because that's important as well. To then realize that, um, mm, this is maybe not going to be so easy. And then you kind of leave the relationship for a while. And then somehow you kind of come back together and realize that, oh, that person actually has grown since you last saw them. And then you kind of go back into it and then, no, they haven't grown. Okay. And you go in again and it's like, no. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> You know? Okay, right, because I just needed to get the picture clear in my mind, right? I'm, I'm tempted to comment on that, but I'm not going to comment on it because this is not for me. I think the Liberty Coach might want to say something, though. Am I right there? Because she seems to be having a good old chuckle. <laughs> Are we coming in, Liberty Coach? I don't know. Kelly, every time you talk about self experience, I just find joy in it. It's just the whole process that you go through. But I get what you're saying. We all got to kind of know who, who we are, I think, first in getting to, to relationships. If you know you're a spiritual, deep person, I think that's one of the first things you should be saying in the conversation. So that like, if somebody else is not even on that pathway or whatever, that you're not kind of using those things that's, oh, well, you're not spiritual, you don't pray, you don't fast, you don't do any of these things. And you know, you wanna maybe have a family. You know, these are some things that might crop up in that. So come back in here, Yvonne. Because I was looking at the messages as well, because there's a big old message there. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to bring Carol Lorraine Rollins in. Um, I want to throw this out. I want to throw this word. I want to throw this out to you guys. And so we can kind of explore this a bit more. So remember I said I had five, five keys to um, being compatible. And these are the five things that I think that we should be looking at right so it's not exclusive right so don't want to shoot me down but this is what what i'm saying so the first the word is rises because we want we don't as especially as single people we want our relationships to rise we want our relationships to do well and that is 
all of our relationships, not just our intimate, our sexual relationships. This is all of our relationships, right? So the word is rising. The R stands for recreational intimacy. Recreational intimacy. And that would be about doing things recreationally with the person that you're with. I think Lorraine, t Lorraine touched on this earlier saying that, you know, she wants to be able to go out. No, actually, no, that wasn't, that was Ruth. Um, the recreation of being that, having that compatibility in the recreational side of your relationship. So there's that kind of intimacy there. The second is I, which is, I think, something that Cheryl was touching on. She didn't say it directly, but she did say um, uh, important to talk to the, the communication. And this is intellectual intimacy, being able to meet the person at the level uh, in an intimate way intellectually. This is going to help the relationship, right? The next is S, the social intimacy, which Lorraine um, pointed out earlier on and um, being able to go out and dance if her partner likes this and she don't like that there's going to be some issues so this is talking about the intimacy in these areas so social intimacy then we have e which is emotional intimacy so that is that 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 kind of huggy fuzzy kind of all of the emotions where the person is in tune with you emotionally I think it's something that, uh, and guys, especially we've got two men in the Zoom and we're still looking for maybe another two men to come in. But guys, you can tell me if that's different for you or not. Um, the in in emotional intimacy in, in terms of what you would want in a relationship. And the last S in the rises is spiritual intimacy. Now, um, this is not talking, when I talk about spiritual intimacy, I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about what you believe um, and how you interact on a spiritual level as being spiritual beings, being spiritually connected. All right. So that's the word rises. And those are the five areas, my hands, oh, five areas that, that, I think is important in terms of com um, compatibility or those things that we can look for in a relationship. I see a hand go up, Lorraine, come in. Um, it was with, was, it was, it's with regards to something that Kellyon said um, about growth. Um, did, did you say that the person wasn't growing and then you split up and then you saw growth? Yeah, what it was, was that um, we started to see each other anymore. And we went up like months later and it, it seemed as though she had, like, like with the break that we had that she just found herself and knew that maybe certain things that right. she did. And that's what I wanted to mention. Because for me, my partner should be elevating me to grow while we're together. I, I don't want to grow when we've split up. He should be pushing me to grow like I would push him to grow. I, I totally agree with you. It's just that I, 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 I want to grow upwards and, and not grow down. That doesn't even make sense. I, I, I don't want to be pounded in, in, in the whole means of know her growth nonetheless my growth so you know i'm not really into abuse and fisticuffs and you don't have to abuse someone to elevate them there are the men tom pop beat up you know what i mean i'm not into i don't think we're talking about the same sort of elevation here <laughs> i'm just saying that maybe, you know if you if you feel that maybe somebody isn't you know, maybe just not quite there and you've tried your best, but you've, you've been honest with them. Sometimes a break is very healthy, you know, it's good just to kind of step away because maybe the person knows that, that within themselves, they just, they, they need time out. Kellyon, so don't ever ask me on a date, yeah? Cause I ain't going on no break. <laughs> we work it out. 
So me and you are not compatible. <laughs> We've discovered that today. <laughs> about dates you're not talking about commitments that's no but i'm saying no but we'd, we'd have to go on a date for us to be end up to get committed so i'm just saying from now before we even ever i might have wanted to ask you to go on a date you don't know but i'm just letting you know now that we won't go on a date because i realize Lorraine, you're not Lorraine, if you're a monster then definitely don't go on a date with me okay? <laughs> i'll just leave it there because <laughs> i got got time for that <laughs> to be honest if you're a gremlin, just stay at home. <laughs> if you're not, we can do that date, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm all day. No. Is there something? Right. Oh, we, are, we, are we moving in the right direction here, guys? This is it doesn't interesting. look like it, actually. I'm just being honest. I understand. I understand what the rain is saying. I think, and this is why. This is why I'm saying I want to do a show with men only in the Zoom room, because we do think differently. Because <laughs> Lorraine and I, <laughs> Lorraine and I are of the same ilk, and and it was very much we work it out. There's there's no break, no we're adults we should be able to work that out for me that's what I'm saying yes because I wanted to say something else of what Kelly on said but, he, but I got a pen and paper too quick to remember what he said but he said something to do with um you you started off by saying it by saying something about wasn't like writing out a contract or anything but it's along that line so like because I wanted to say my last relationship we were both 40, 41. We were friends for many, many years first. And three months into our relationship, he asked me to marry him. The reason being is because we had a discussion. We're in our 40s. We've had children with other people. We're at a time in our life now where we want to settle down. And we, agreed, we agreed that this is going to be a no BS relationship. You like doing this, I like doing that, and we like doing things together. So this is, this is the end goal. We want to be married and be settled. And everything else doesn't matter. And for me, having that, that uh, binding words with each other stopped all the, there was no jealousy, you know, no. I can't actually think of hardly anything negative in the relationship, we didn't even argue. We bickered now and again, but we just saw everything as not worth it. So I think when you start a relationship at the beginning, at our age, if you do talk about your needs, your wants, your aspirations, it's a big help. Well, let me just quickly say this. Um, the, the thing is that the young lady I was seeing, she eventually told me that she had, um, What's it called again? That kind of issue when you have um, um, anxiety. Because um, I hadn't, I wasn't aware of that. Only that I knew something wasn't quite right. And then she did eventually say to me, "These are the issues that I have." And then uh, eventually later on, she then was diagnosed with something else. And I thought, "Oh, okay." So that I was able to understand why that was the case. Why it actually was going that way. I mean, like just treatment where I'm thinking this is just out in the ordinary, this is random. It's almost like Jerk and Hyde to some respect. We got on really well, you know, we were good friends and everything, just that there was just certain things that maybe would come up and it was just wasn't handled very well and then realised why that was the case. So, yeah. So just to quickly ask you, and then we're going to go to Carol, because Carol has been waiting for some time to um, answer the question. So Kelly on, right, because like, I, this is a, a show, right? And so I don't really want to go into coaching, right? But it's very tempting to. But the question I'm going to ask you relates back to something I said earlier. Do you feel that in that relationship that you were fully um, fulfilled? with that person that your needs were met all your needs were met uh that's a good question actually um oh um 
It's going to be, uh, you know what, I can't, that's, it's a bit complicated. It's a bit complicated. That's fine. It's fine. Because yeah. I'm going back, the reason why I ask that is because I'm going back to the illustration that I said about mm. putting a square peg in a round hole. Because yeah. one person gets fulfilled, and this is what happens in a lot of relationships, one of the parties gets fully fulfilled, and you will hear that person, what, well, what, you know, you say something right, you might say something's not right, and that person, but everything, you know, everything's good, you know, we're getting on a right, and I don't know what's the matter, what, what is it, what, why aren't you happy? But that person that's not happy, they're the ones that are stuck in the, their needs are not being met. And that, so this is why we are talking about compatibility, because generally a lot of us will make excuses in a relationship and put up with stuff that really irritates, really, really irritates, and it's not good for us. And then we'll be with the person for X amount of years and then we'll be so fed up we're like the relationship's done when we could have done ourselves a favor in the beginning and just realize actually we are not compatible as much as this person is a nice person and i think he's a great per i have to talk as a female because i'm a female he's a nice guy because how many women have i heard say he's a nice guy but you, do you get what i'm saying she I understand I, I totally get it. I totally get it. I was going to say just because I know that we have to, we actually have to move on. Obviously, I've, I've already been married. So, mm -hmm. you know, if I go into another one, I want to make sure that it's going to be, you know, more intact than ever before. Mm -hmm. So, when certain, because what you're asking the right questions there, you know, in terms of who's being fulfilled, where you're satisfied, or whatsoever. My thing is that if I see um, a, 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 an attitude or a, um, behavior that to me seems a bit like oh something like, like this is what's going to happen if i go into the marriage to me it just rings off alarm bells so even though i get what lorraine is saying you know it, we're, we're in it from the from the the um start of it to the end i get it but if you start and vice versa if i start doing things where it starts to just get flashbacks or Oh no, this this may happen if I was to go into a relationship, I then have to take a step back and say, okay, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's where I'm coming from. I absolutely agree. We all know, we all know that there are red flags. That we all know this, that there are red flags in a relationship. We'll do a show on red flags. So I'm not asking it's it's not a, a dig or anything, and I don't think anyone is is on that par with you i think for me it's just understanding for us to understand that so when we have been in a relationship like that when we go into the next one we see it quickly we can move quickly because what we what human beings generally try to do tend to do is go from this relationship they go into the next one there are the signs are there again but make excuses and we stay there when we shouldn't stay there because we're not compatible and then after a while we're like oh chart i'm done and then you move on to a next one and then we're just repeating that cycle and and you know my grandmother say you, you know you mustn't go from hand to hand like a bad penny that's what she tell me so we want to alleviate and relieve ourselves from the pain of going into those relationships but also having the mind that we're learning from the relationships that we're actually coming out of because there's no point in being in a relationship and not learning nothing from it and then going back into the same or going into a different relationship with a different person with the same funk and the same brass no point we are grown and so we should be able to um navigate ourselves better than that. So I'm going to go to Lorraine and then we're going to go to some of the comments in the thread because Facebook, Facebook is blowing up. It's blowing up. So Lorraine, uh, Carol Lorraine, I'm going to come to you. If you unfreeze yourself, darling. Hello, hey. darling. You've been waiting so long. Sorry, darling, to keep you waiting so long. What was your comment? Um, well, someone um, I was talking to the other week, we were talking about um, relationships and being in relationships and and she sent me um something via whatsapp about being in a relationship being in a relationship um or meeting someone um and 
thinking they're compatible and this is due to trauma at the end of the day. So um, people come together due to trauma also. Um, I believe in having a friendship and um, um, getting to know one another and that. But a lot of people do that via trauma as well. So um, when they do that, you know, they feel that, it, I mean, i.e. it could be, um, you know, you've been brought up by a single parent on both sides. Um, and you, you feel that no matter what, this is going to, this is going to, uh, we're not going to let that happen. And we're going to work it out. But it doesn't always work out. But, you know, sometimes, you know, it's just, just, looking into it the other day and it's like yeah some people because coming from my perspective of work as well my parents had their on and off relationships my dad wasn't very i mean he, he i mean he's a nice person but he he wasn't very um what should i say in the marriage the way he should be um he cheated um and at the end of the day um Due to that, sometimes I feel maybe that's why I'm not in a relationship. Or the relationships I've had are due to other people in that same situation. And you try and work things out to the best of your abilities and it doesn't work. It doesn't work out at all. You know, so sometimes it's stuck down to trauma and that's why sometimes people don't, 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 um, you know, stay together okay well. thanks for that um carol um let me just address that in terms of trauma mm. i think when we went when we were talking um about this earlier on in the show we we mentioned and i think it was even mentioned on the facebook that people that everyone has to uh work on themselves first right yeah and, and I think that trauma is a thing that will destroy the strongest of friendships. Right. If the two people are not one in agreement and two, mm. if they're not prepared to work on themselves, it's right. trauma is, is, is trauma is almost like, if I put it this way, it's like having a, 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 a when you're hit by a, uh, trauma it's almost like you've had somebody that's a, a sniper trained person shoot you and hit you in a part that you you can't heal yourself directly or sometimes you're shot and you don't even know that you've been shot does that make sense right and and so right. so you have to get to a place where you are fully aware that you need to get help and go for that help as a single, a singular person, not as a single person out of a relationship, but as a singular person. And then also, if you are in a relationship, invite your partner into that so that you can heal um, and, and your partner can see how your healing process is going yeah. and work with you. Yeah. If you some, have, the relationship's not going to work otherwise. Yeah. Because some, cause sometimes you feel that you've gone to that level. Sometimes you feel that you've, you've gone to that point and you're starting to love yourself. But sometimes it's a point that have you done enough? You know, have you done enough? Um, and then that's when everything hits the fan and it goes, you know, the other way. So I do agree with what you're saying. I mean, as we said before in previous, you need to let everything go and lo start loving yourself again and deal with those issues as well. But I just wanted to bring up that's how sometimes people seem to tend to get together because of trauma as well. So it's just something that was brought up the other day. Yeah, because it's commonality. You've been through yeah. something, yeah. I've been through something, so we'll get together, we'll work it out, and we'll work on each other and help each other. But actually, yeah. pain and pain very often just makes more pain. Right, right. And sometimes it's not something that they're thinking about. They just what they can... Oh, sorry, someone's funny. Sometimes they think, you know, that... Um, yeah, um, they're not thinking about it. They've just gone into it. 
mm-hmm. you know. But then afterwards, the point of, you and know. Is, and this is why we do the show. So because because we have to now be conscious. We're grown. We're big people. So we have to now be conscious of of our behaviour and take responsibility for the behaviour. We are not our trauma. None of us are. Trauma is something that has happened and we have a choice. And I know it's going to sound harsh, but this is real life. And it's time we pull up our big girl pants. We have a choice whether we carry the bag of trauma or we let it go. We have a choice. We do have a choice. And that comes from the renewing of the mind. And that mind has to be renewed daily. It's, it's, it's a process. And I, I can say this, because I've walked through it. So I'm not talking from a, a, a point of view where, oh, I've just know and I'm just being uppity. I've walked through right. trauma. I know what right. it's like to, right. to experience rape. Um, I know what it's like to experience domestic violence. I know what right. it's like to lose a child, and to, uh, to have my child die in my arms. I've experienced trauma. So why I say this is you have a choice. It's either you carry that and you put a rucksack on your back and you let that thing weigh you down or you choose to deal with it and move on and create the life that you want. That's yes. where I'm coming from. We, we, we got to get out of this. Oh, this has happened to me. And yes, it has happened, but it's not happening now. It happened but it's not happening yeah. now. So we, it's, a, it's about us moving forward now. Wow. Otherwise, we're just going to bring junk into our relationships. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. We have to move. And that's why I want to bring it up. It's a point of we have to move forward. We have to get rid of all that. Not get rid of it. It's there. It's, it's done. We've been there, done that. But we need to move forward um, and not let it get involved in our, in our present and our future. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Right, we've got someone's some people waiting. So we've got Rose T who's new. So we're gonna bring Rose T in, then Shalomi's gonna come in after that. So Rose T, good evening. Do you wanna unmute yourself, darling? Okay. Hi, can you hear me? Good evening, I can hear you. Thank you for joining yeah, us. Yeah. Hi, uh good afternoon. I'm in Canada. Okay. So it's and good evening for you guys. Yeah, I did go to work today. I'm not feeling very well, but I always follow you and watch your live shows. So I'm a relationship coach and uh, I've gone through trauma too. I lost my husband about 20 years ago mm-hmm. and uh, I was left with three young children. Mm-hmm. Trauma is there, but the problem with us, black people, I'm sorry to say, we do not recognize that we go through trauma. We think it's a white people syndrome, it's a white people disease. And we try to sweep it under the rug. And we sweep in so much junk under the rug that we are no longer able to sit on the rug anymore. And then we get um, the past hitting us in the face. So what we need to do before you go into any relationship, you have to check it out. Do a proper self-assessment. Who are you? Why did the other relationship fail? Most of us don't do that. We jump onto the next bus before we even take a breath. You know, we need to take a step back. We are all adults. We know what we are looking for. Ask yourself, what makes you happy? Most of us don't, especially women, we are guilty of this. We go into relationships because it's convenient for us. And we have this syndrome that uh, what will people say? What will people say if I stay single for the rest of my life? What will people say if I am out of relationship? Because it looks good on the outside. That's the biggest problem that I've seen with most of my clients. So I always have to sit down with them. Take a self-assessment of your last relationship. If you were widowed, have you healed from trauma, you know, of losing your husband? Because when you lose the husband, that's a huge trauma that you really need to deal with. Because a lot of people will go into this 
patterns where they get into a relationship and then if a guy gets a headache, they freak out. They, oh my goodness, he's going to die. You know, if he's late from work for some reason, they freak out. They start calling all the police stations and, you know, all the hospitals finding out if he is in hospital. All this happens if we don't deal with our trauma. And the problem with it is trauma can grow in us. You know, it can grow and have these thick roots in our subconscious minds. And the most powerful thing that we need to know is our subconscious minds. Our daily thinking is not as huge as the subconscious. Because the most important thing is when we go to sleep. That's when everything happens. You start having nightmares. You start, you know, having sleep. You start getting scared to go to your own bed because you're scared that you're going to face a trauma. But most of us, we ignore that. And we think, oh, yeah, I'll get over it. You know, I've heard people say, time will heal. Time heals? It hasn't healed. It doesn't. You have to, you have to, you, you do have to do the work. There is work yes, involved. There the is work. self development. Yeah. It, you, but you, the, 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 I think the point of that is you, yes, we, we have trauma, but we, yes. can, we can move past trauma. We yes. can live, we can have a very fruitful life. We can create yes. relationships if we work on ourselves. Yes. Yeah. And I agree with you, Michelle, you know, when you talked about uh, carrying a sack of rocks on your back, mm. how do you that weight? on your back kill you slowly mm -hmm. because what happens that weight is gonna get unbearable mm. it's gonna get bearable and when it does get un unbearable that's when we we hear that oh yeah that woman she is crazy you know ask this man they'll tell you oh my goodness that woman she is crazy you know one small thing and you will freak out you know one small issue that probably um your child is trying to ask something from you and you get irate, like, come on, girl, deal with your issues. But the problem is we don't want to face the truth. We try to avoid it, thinking that, you know what, if I put it aside, I will deal with it some other time or it will magically go away. It won't magically go away. You have to face the truth head on. Deal with the trauma first before you get somebody involved in it. Sorry, I'll just unmute myself. Right, so yeah. absolutely, I agree with that totally. Thank you for your comments, Rose T. I'm going to bring in Shalomi as she's been waiting to, to bring in her, her comments. Uh, today, I'm, again, it seems like I'm having a little bit of a fight in here with um, some bats again. So I'm going to bring Shalomi come in for me and then go for it. I think you're off. Yeah, Yvonne. Um, one of my friends wanted to comment, but she said she's not able to comment. I don't know why. Um, she's not able to partake on Facebook. I don't know why. She said she sent you a request. Is she not my, one of my friends? Um, I doubt it, but she said she sent you a request I probably haven't seen. So I'm saying probably that's why she can't um um think it. Okay, yeah, back back to um. Tell her to friend. Tell her to friend request me, and I'll I'll put her in now. She she said she did. She said she did. Okay, what's her name? Um, Lindsay, Carlin Lindsay. All right, go, carry on talking, and I'll go and see. Go on. Yes, um, listening to everyone. That's why I said. People should be honest and take accountability. Everyone's lifestyle and, and way of growing up is different. Me as a Jamaican, we are used to being single mothers, right? We just get on with it. Some people, they might find it more difficult to deal with. After we have gone through life, we're in our 40s, most of us, or if anyone, just a bit younger. We are supposed to learn from life already. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to myself. Myself, I haven't been in a relationship for over 10 years and reason being what is being offered 
is just not good enough. Oh, we'll go out for about three years and see if you're the one. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm paying my own bills. I'm getting on. Who are you to see if I am the one? Right? So um, I just, there are certain things I do. And when I said fate, I don't mean blind. Blind is not fate. I'm going tomorrow with fate. I don't have a clue. I have a plan, but I, I don't know. Tomorrow have a way of surprising me. I've had some tomorrows that surprise me. I have plans today, but tomorrow don't work out. So that's why I said relationship is fate. It's not blind. You don't know me. You, you will never, even when you're with me 20 years, I still do things and you probably say, oh she did that because i don't know me i do things that i think oh, okay then you understand i'm growing growing is good growing is not bad people being different so you have to know and it annoys me when i hear a man saying to me okay then um, we'll get married probably probably like probably and some woman do you want married marriage or do you want to hook up with a guy every now and then be be the available vagina for forgive my language but i can't find off a better word um you take it to the movie you're paying your own bill you're buying a nice brazilian here you're playing your lipstick already so what is he doing an available penis um company what are you looking for that should be what are you as a woman because somehow the men think that it's a privilege for us as women to get one of them. And I'm thinking, um, I can't get that part. What do you bring to the table? I am the table of. You can eat all you want on this table. I am the table, right? So there comes up with like, oh, um, in the next, I might marry you. I, I might marry you. I like, I, I don't get it. So what's the difference? But you can have sex with me in the next three weeks. Like, I probably am just a 40 hard ear old naive woman. You're willing to have sex with me within three months, but you want to see if I am the one within three, four, five, ten years. And I might freak out because sometimes I do my wild side come out, yeah? And I might do stuff and I might shout, but then I'm loyal. What do you want? Do you want to work at it? Because when the house gets hot, you open the window, turn on a fan or something. You don't abandon the house to a cooler house. So are you, are you paying your mortgage? Yeah, so look at a woman as this. Because if you go in it in a mindset to say, oh, this, I've been in a relationship before. We have done, we are 40 odd, we have done a lot of things. We have caused harm to people, if we be honest. And people have hurt us in our life, right? We have to let go. Yvonne, you're new to me, yeah? Whatever you have with somebody, I'm not adapting your enemy. And I don't want to adapt, no, I'll take you for you, right? So we have to have this mentality, yeah, that we are going in a new thing. This is a new person. You could be married that hundred times. If, if that one has worked out, we wouldn't be on the single market. If another man did work out, we would not be here. But how old were we? Were we at this age then? We have, we have learned. So for me to see in all these big guys, big men, big boys saying that I want to get to know you and see if you're the one, we have attitude. I have attitude. Uh, uh, my kid, just tell me, mom, you've been shouting all day because I've been singing, dancing for no reason. Right. I might do that in a relationship where I decide I'm going to turn. Right. So we need to just. I don't know the words because my words ain't good right? or, or, or nice but what do you want and I would really want to know what does a man I'm really curious what otherwise from a woman who you're going to take time to know you can't know us like God made Eve put her in the garden and Adam was okay Eve went there and Eve spoiled it all Women, women ain't stabilized. And a lot of women is going to say, no, 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 no. You understand? We do things. We act out of character. We will scream at you because we want attention. We will make argument because you've been watching the TV and we want you to come and lie next to us. You understand? So, as I said, we are 40 years. Yeah? I don't know who is available to wait on a man. Wait on a man. My bills are paid by direct debit. It's just annoying. Wait on a man to marry me, to see if I am the one while 
I'm doing all the wife position. You know what? I'm just not getting it. I need to be educated about this bit because I'm not getting it. So I would really like the men, what do you want? What do you want to know about a woman? Because you're 40 odd, you, can, you can't figure out women. You, 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 like, you can't, you won't. So what do you want? Because we want man. So we want to know how to please you. Okay, so guys, we have two men in the Zoom room. Because I cannot respond to that. Only the guys in the Zoom room can respond. So who, which one of you is ready? <laughs> Go ahead, Kellyon. Go ahead, Kellyon. Jump in there, brother. Uh, Tony's mic was off just now. I didn't know why he just didn't carry on. Hey, carry on, yeah, right. I'll give you that. He hasn't even said anything yet. You know what I mean? So, come on, bro. Unmute that and start and carry on talking. Come on, chat. I've got to talk eventually. <laughs> shalomi, shalomi, shalomi. Wow, that's a lot to unpack. What does a man really want? What does a man really want? Put yourself on mute, Yvonne. You got to read the, the um, yeah, there we go. Whoo, good thing I got this rum here, I'll tell you that. Um, all right, so just to let you know that we have 35 minutes left of this show. So okay. whatever it said has to be said quick. You're going to have to extend it. Right, okay. Extend it. right, okay. Come on, let's go. So the sim there is no simple answer. Um, if you refer to some of the comments I've made, I'm just going to bring up the chat. Um, so somebody mentioned about... Um, some somebody said about being worthy and you feel everybody feels like i'm the man blah 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 well everybody should have that feeling everybody should feel i am worthy me personally i believe that i am god i am i believe that god is in me yeah i believe um any woman who is lucky enough to enter into my life is gonna attach themselves with a god. I I'm that I'm I'm that self-confident in my own capabilities. I'm that self-confident in my own self-worth. Um, I teach that to my children. That my children are gods. It's called affirmation. Yeah. Um, I move on. Another comment I made in there was: man can never know a woman. I want a man that's going to know me. I want a man that's going to do this. I want a man that's going to do that. Listen, man is never going to know a woman. Man is never going to know a woman. Yes means no. No means maybe. Maybe means something else. You just don't know. And years, years and years of experience, 52 years, this is my 52nd year of life. I don't know women. I might know my partner, but I don't know her a hundred percent. It's impossible. If you're looking for perfection, you just give up now. Just give up now. Don't even bother looking. Don't even join in a conversation because you're not going to find any man who can understand you a hundred percent. Yeah? You can spend three years telling him every detail of your life so that he understands the trauma that the young lady um, explained about overcoming your trauma because overcoming my trauma is my responsibility overcoming your trauma is your responsibility however when we join as a union overcoming trauma becomes a shared union thing so I have to help you overcome your trauma. You have to help me overcome my trauma. But guess what? We ain't never getting rid of that trauma. And I know, Yvonne, you said, got to find it. It dies if you work on it every day. It never dies. If you lost a child in your life, that trauma never goes. Yeah? I, Can I, I work have, with, hold on. I, I, I'm going to come in right there because I have lost a child. 
Yeah, so but that, but that's never I, gone. I, 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 I'm talking. I'm talking from my own experience. So you cannot tell me. Okay. You, you can't tell me. Ask a psychologist been. about trauma. You, you, listen, I'm walking the journey. So yes. I'm, I'm not asking you. The mere fact, the mere <laughs> fact that you raised it tells me this is. I hear what you're saying, but what you're saying is textbook stuff, right? Okay. I'm the talking about, about. Hold trauma. on. Anybody, I'm talking about because you, you, you. No, 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 no. Because you okay. have. Is you anybody have, in here a you psychologist? You call my name. Hold on. You call yeah. my name and you, 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 you mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Head. So gonna, give I'm me gonna, the grace. I'm going to give you another one. To, yeah. to come in oh, and, no. and it's no, no, you haven't allowed me to say what Okay, go ahead. Saying. Go ahead. Now, you're telling me textbook stuff. Yeah. And I'm telling you stuff from experience. Yeah. And so I have lost my son. You, you haven't quite, you haven't asked me how long, you haven't asked me anything. You've just gone mm. by a state. It's a trauma. Just a, it's a trauma. A trauma. So, in my experience, I said it dies. It does. It does die. And you learn to live with the loss of that person. I've also lost my mother as well. Mm. Right? I've lost my father as well. So there has been many losses in my life. Yeah. There, and other traumas. So my, if, if we were to put my life on... Yeah. Uh, on a TV screen, you would say, well, how does this woman do what she does? And I do. And I yeah, do that you... because I work on myself. Okay. Like, I'm new here. But has the this trauma way... disappeared? Has the trauma disappeared? The trauma is the trauma. Do ask the question, does the trauma have ask... an impact? No, no, no. Ask the question. Dawn, does the tell me, has the trauma have disappeared? an impact on my life? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. So you have just told me the trauma dies. And I said to you, it doesn't die. It so doesn't. you've just contradicted what you just said. I've just said to you what I Did just said. Did the trauma said. die? Yes, it does die. So it doesn't exist any longer. Well, if I said that, then that would mean that my son never existed. So that's my I, point. Hold on, hold the on. Hold on, is I, not hold dead. on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If I said that, then I would say that my father didn't exist and my mother didn't exist. They did exist. Yes. But the pain the trauma of, is still there. Hold on. The pain of the trauma yeah. has died. It's has not died. died. But they have died. You can't it's say it. but it hasn't you, died. You, you, Tony, you can't okay. tell me that you, because you okay. have not walked in my shoes. You okay. walk in well, your shoes. Okay. So you let me give you a, shoes. So listen to what I'm going to say. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. When you was a child, did you get beat by your mum or dad? No. Did you get lashes with a belt? No. You never got that? No. Tell you, did you get lashes with a belt? Yes, we get lush, we get licks. Yes, I did. Good. Okay. So this is this is a male experience that clearly, Yvonne, you didn't get. But there are gonna be some women who did get it. Yeah, especially Caribbean and African um, um I saw it people. with my older sister. I, okay. I didn't experience it. I didn't okay. experience it, right? Okay, so I'm gonna give you the example of trauma. Every time you got lashed with belt, yeah, you experience trauma. Yeah. And believe it or not, that trauma lives on through your life. Yeah? Have you heard of post-traumatic slave disorder? Feel free to answer. Have you heard of post-traumatic slave disorder? Um, can I come in just a bit? Go ahead. Yeah. Funnily, we are having this conversation because I spoke to my sister only yesterday about some childhood stuff and anybody born in the caribbean or jamaica know that life can be brutal very brutal and my sister said when i went back for the first time in 2012 my sister said you're pretending as if you don't remember what has been done to you as a child right and i couldn't explain certain things to her because she was still hurting right and yesterday we ended up having the conversation and I said to her, 
I chose not to go back and relive certain things. I chose to move on. I still remember, but the pain is not there. Like, it, yes, it happened. I know it happened. But when I speak, once I couldn't speak publicly, I would be crying. I would be broken. My heart would be in pieces and it would go on. I don't have anxiety over it anymore. So yes, you don't forget because you can't forget life. You can't forget. My mommy whipped the daylight out of me when I was young. But to be honest, it was a thing, to be honest. And I wasn't such a nice child. So it didn't bother me. But other children, it might bother. So different so, people find mm -hmm. ways to deal yeah. with different situations. And I chose, at the age of 32, I chose to take a sterilization because I didn't want to have hunger children. I didn't want to keep having fatherless children. So I, some woman chose to find a man. Over 10 years, as I said already, I have not slept with no one because it's my choice not to repeat a cycle thinking, oh, if I find the next man, I might settle down. I'm like, you know what, girl? Sort yourself out. Look after you. Take care of you. Sort you out. Leave man alone. And so, yes, yeah, nothing hurt. Like, if if people say certain things now it used to hurt like hell it broke me i thought i wouldn't be here feeling like this today but it brought me to a point where i had to deal with certain issues and um, situation i had to heal and as i said it doesn't like i can it doesn't hurt no more my sister she still, when she, I was supposed to speak to her yesterday, she was literally broken. And I said, you have to let go. If you don't let go, yes, I saw my mom carrying a dead child from far to a hospital. I seen her vomit for days, but my mom went on to have many more babies. Yeah. And probably she remember, but you understand, you don't live in it. It don't hurt. It stopped hurting after a while. If you allow it to hurt, if you mm -hmm. allow it to hurt, it's going to hurt. But I said, I made a decision. As I said, I've never been in a relationship, really. And I'll be honest, because I played the field. So I didn't change like that. Jesus came in my life. I accept his principle. His principle renewed my mind. And I, I, I would not be this person if I hadn't come in contact with the Bible, with God. So different things and different journey cause people to change. The renewing of the mind, it, 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 it does beautiful things. I'm not, I used to be so bitter. You, you mess with me, I'll cut you down without even, I couldn't care what I say. But no, I, I think in my head, Shalom, do you really have to say that? Do you want to pass on pain? I realized passing on my pain wasn't nice. So now that I've healed, now that I've worked on me, now I realize that I needed to heal. I stopped doing it. I like, Shalom, can I ask a question? What, what, year did, what, did, what year did your epiphany happen? Um, it, it, it happened slowly. It can't say it just not happened sudden. Nothing happened sudden. So you're 40, it, everything you're 40 is a ish. Everything. Did it happen in your 30s, 20s? For, in the last couple of years? When did, I, when I, did you suddenly realize I've got, I've, I've got to let go of this? It, as I said, things were different. Like having children from the age of a young age, I spoke. I never wanted to be like my mom. Okay. I said, there's no way I'm going to keep having from a young age, right? Did you when ever, I realized, did, can I ask a question? Did you ever hit your children? Did you ever give them a lash? Yes, yes. I slapped my kids. I slapped them. And then yeah. I stopped. When I realized to myself, because as I said, it's, it's a generational undone, not sin, it's trauma. but it's a cultural it's trauma. thing. It's no, trauma. no, no, no. It's, That's what it's it is. Not, uh, yeah, can I, I, I explain to you? Guys, guys, hold on, hold on, hold on. Time out. Time. Because, and it's not that I don't want this conversation to go on, but we've actually gone off topic. And, um, and okay. it's there. <laughs> people um, like, uh, actually we're off topic yeah. big time yeah so okay. i need to bring that back into what we are we can talk about this we can do this and we can give it its own show because i do believe it warrants its own show yeah 
Yeah, and, and, and we've I'm just gonna we've got less than half an hour. We've got less let than me, half an hour. Let me just finish off because no one answered the question I asked earlier. Do you understand what post-traumatic slave disorder is? And if you really? don't, then that's, a, that's, a, that's something that affects black people. And we're in this room as black people. And unless you understand that and address that, then some of the questions that you're asking become unanswered because you haven't addressed that trauma of black of what post-traumatic slave disorder is. Okay, so what we're gonna do, Tony, is what we will do is we will give that its own show. That's what we'll do. Because it, it, we've got less than half an hour and we're not gonna get that through that in half an hour. And we've already started on this other topic um, in terms of our compatibility. So I- so I can I just finish off? I, Let me I finish off with Salome. On this, on the, on this matter of compatibility, on, where I was. Yeah, so on the, on the matter, of not, not the slave stuff, but on the compatibility. Yeah, okay. So as I, as I was saying, no man will know any woman completely. End of. If you think you so can do, find the perfect do you man, want, Tony? Tony, what one do question I want to ask? What? Because the thing is, we want a man, so we want to know how to please no, you, to desire not really. you. What do you, no, it, we are, we're talking about me. the women. It's not no, all but the it's women what want. Me, is it? It's what you want. Everybody okay, is then. individual. Okay. There's, okay, there's then. More than, okay. Listen, there's more than enough women out there who just want a big dick in their punani. Yeah? There's more than enough of them. Yeah? There's but, more than um, enough women who just want somebody to bring them up. Yeah? I'm sorry to cut the language. It sounds a little bit crude, but that's what it is. There's more than enough women who are thinking, you know what, I need a baby. I need to play the state at its game. I need a finer man who can breed me and give me some nice pick me so I can start getting my money from the state. There's more than enough. And it's not a new thing. It's been going on for years. Yeah? You're, you're, you're in your 40s now. You said I'm looking for this. What you're looking for is what a lot of women aren't looking for what you want. So it's the individual thing. You cannot here, generalize. Tony, you cannot Tony, generalize Tony, and say, well, this Tony, is what women want. Tony, we are here and we are talking yeah. about 40. We are talking about, as I said to you, I've been through that phase already. And yeah. that's what I said to you. We are here. So we are, we are not talking about those who you just described want that. I'm asking you as a 52 year old man, right? Mm -hmm. What do you desire from happiness. a woman? I'm, I'm just saying like happiness. me as in simple. Uh, no, your happiness is your responsibility. No, your it's happiness not. is your not if a your woman's in your life. Ooh, ooh. Okay, now, now, now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest and abide with us now. <laughs> now mute me, Yvonne. Please the mute me. The path of the righteous man you is the set of all sides and iniquities and the tyranny of the people. Let him be who in the name of charity and goodwill shepherds the weak through the valley of darkness. For he is truly his father's keeper. Yeah? I all can right. run with the scripture for you as well. Yeah? My job is to ha bring happiness for myself and my children. Yes. But if a woman comes into my life, my job is to make her happy and her to make me happy. Where's your, where's your mentor, Patrick? Because he would tell you the same thing. That's your, that's your priority. Okay, let's, 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 let's rein this in, yeah, guys. As adults, it is our responsibility to take responsibility for ourselves first. First and foremost. We must take responsibility for ourselves. My happiness or anyone's happiness long term is the responsibility of that person. Your partner comes in to enhance that. That's all. I cannot put my happiness and I would never teach any of anybody as a coach, as, as a parent, I would never, ever, ever teach my children to look into the to a per, another person to make them happy their happiness is their responsibility first your partner is the enhancement of it but it's not their responsibility it's not their response you if me and you are together tony it's not my responsibility 
to keep you happy. It's my responsibility to communicate with you and find out the things that you like. Hence why we did love languages and all of that. And now we're doing compatibility. So it would be because I, because I love you, I would want to do things to please you. But that's nature, human nature. It's not my responsibility to always please you because I'm not always going to please you. And we know that women are not always going to please men because women have other things that they're dealing with like hormonal um, imbalances and so do men and so do men right because it's not just women who have these things so this is so let us just kind of um i think where shalomi's coming from is the the, the and unfortunately we've only got two men here and we are very very happy to have you we love you we love the fact that you're here we love the fact that your input is is great and, and we will always hold this space for you but i think from if you look at the the demographics even in the zoom room and on the the facebook it is the majority of women and women are saying they don't know what men want that's what what as a collective but wait, men. wait, wait. You just asked me and I told you what men want. We just want happiness. Men are not complicated creatures. We're not like women. We don't have time at the mouth. Yeah. We don't have men's, we, we don't have um, post traumatic stress, um, um, postnatal depression. We don't have, um, what's the time when you, you, you get hot flushes and all that? Menopause. Menopause. We don't get all that. Men are very simple creatures. Yeah, Kellyon, talk, talk the talk to me. <laughs> what do you want me to say? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are we simple creatures? Are, are we okay. simple creatures? Uh, okay, just to add on to what you're saying, I think there's maybe, I think, about six things that, that men want. It was uh, rest, peace, is it sex, and men is, uh, women is about 100 odd. So is that is that feedback? Is that, no, is that, is that name, 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 right? Because you know I'm the person with the pen, right? And I'm making notes. So what is it? If you could give me five things that men, you think generally, not you, but generally with, off the top of your head, that men want from a woman, what would it be? Well, if it's from a woman or just, just generally, so to speak. It, yeah, because... It, we don't want to overcomplicate this. Okay, women, women. Uh, food cooked. You want who? Food. 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 Food cooked. Cook, right? Rest. Yeah. Oh, I think totally disagreed already. Rest, as in peace. Um, I think sex is in there. Um, Can I just go back to the peace, the rest and the peace? What, yeah. what does that look like? Well, when I come back from home, I'm coming back from home. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, coming back from work. Yeah, obviously the the, the, the day's been long mm -hmm. and whatsoever. So we don't want chat, 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 chat. Hang, 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 hang. No talk. So no what communication. No, it's not communication. It's no drama. That's drama, the one yeah. for me. We no drama. drama. I, don't, I don't want to come home and hear oh. Can this is broken, that is broken, why haven't you fixed that? Why is this not doing that? Why, what's this? Hello, darling, how are you? Okay, but you know what? I'll just say, I'll just say this. If you are with a woman who, as you get her in, and this is funny, because I had a client like this the other day, it was hilarious. If you, have a, if you have a woman that's complaining about you as you come in, I'm gonna ask you, check her love language. That's all I'm going to say. Check our love language. Yeah. Because, because and I say that because, sorry, Kelly, I you was going to come in. Oh, I'm just saying, oh, we'll come back. I'm just saying that because I, I actually had a client that was uh, a married couple that were going through this the other day. And it was quite interesting because to her husband, she was quite moany. But, and, and he was saying that she doesn't want to participate in sex right so it was becoming a sexless marriage yeah let me just let me just give you this right so it was becoming a sexless marriage and what had happened was he was like he would see her she'd come in she she studies she works and there's children he works he studies and there's children so they're equal in in their relationship and so when she comes in from so he's all like 
touching up her bottom and and she don't want him to do that she's like you know and and so she's like i don't want him to do that so i'm asking so do you like your husband yes do you like her yes and we're talking we're having this dialogue but what came out of the conversation was this is that he was his love language is touch right her language is acts of service so basically what she was saying is she's got work and so when things go wrong at work she's 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 got it in the head she then has to go and study and that's more on her head and then as soon as she walks in the house the house is a mess so as she walks into the house she's back to work again so in terms of her being available to make love or have sex she's not available because she's having as far as she's, she's so tired she's got three jobs right and so what she's saying to him is it would help if when she comes in that this was done or that was done but the the language was he was not hearing that he's just he's just feeling the rejection which he has been rejected not taking that away from him he has been rejected because she's saying i don't want you to touch me because she's got to deal with the kids she's got to then go and clean up the house and he's saying but i do help and she's saying but not enough so i said all of, this, all of this to say that sometimes it is just a matter of communication and knowing about the love language and it could really help in certain areas that's all i said that to say come on kelly on. yeah but you did say two weeks ago that the physical touch wasn't necessarily or wasn't sex no it, it's not necessarily sex but that's how she perceived it because right. she felt that every time that he touched her it would lead to that so she's happy to how she she's exhausted she said i'm exhausted so she's happy to lay on the chair with him and just cuddle watch tv but for him if she cuddles him that's hit her way of saying she's up for it so he's going to try and take it to the next level which she doesn't want because she's tired just do you get that so it's communication and this is what i'm saying the communication learning about how you perceive each other would help actually they're, they're still together and they're still working it out they are they do love each other but their communication was just really off really off. okay okay i mean you said acts of service he could have just cleaned up the yard of which then it would have made her feel sorry there's not a few back here it would have made her feel better more comfortable to maybe um take things that way because she would have felt satisfied with the fact that the house is clean we're talking about a, a woman from this traditional point of view of maybe she's at home they're able to look after the house he's had a hard day at work he's now coming in and all he's getting is yang, 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 when all he just wants is maybe a hot bath he wants some peace put some food uh, maybe a hug, a cuddle. If he is that um, strength is there, maybe he may want to take it there. Maybe he may not want to. Okay. What uh, the point that Tony's making is that we have a little things that that um, that we're satisfied about. There's there's not a hundred list of things. Women is is it is Jesus. It's it's a lot of stuff. Whereas men, we we are very simple creatures. And I know Preach, Sammy brother, wants to, preach. he wants. She wants answers of what men want. And I think it's really what she wants, to be honest with you. I don't think it's really us. I think it's really her. And I'm, I'm hearing a frustration. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing a, an, an anger. I'm hearing like, boy, I, I, there's, there's something, something there that, that needs to be satisfied, what I'm hearing. And um, I think, go on, go on. Not, not by a man. My frustration from man comes at me being 40 odd, right? Um, not behind bills, do not have any debts. I'm surviving, I'm living, right? And they're going to, like, oh, we're going to date. Oh, okay, we're going to date, right? And um, go out for a while. Yeah, as I said, I've been in, on a date once in 10 years. And on the date... Um, the guy wanted to kiss and I'm like wait now you're a grown man I couldn't get that bit like 
you want to stick your tongue down my throat, that saliva is going to stay with me for six weeks, right? I don't know your mouth yet. So I'm like, um, I'm like, you understand? But yet still, you don't want to get married. You want to get to know me. But on the first day, you want to stick your tongue down my throat. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not getting certain things because I think, as I said, I've not Where's really Patrick? been faithful. Where's I'm Patrick? Not being, you need, uh, you need to is, speak to Patrick about choosing men. <laughs> I, I, as, I said, as I said, right, this is me. I'm going in a relationship loyal. I don't cheat no more, right? So I'm thinking people my age that say they want relationship, you understand? They want a relationship, yeah? So the frustration is not from getting a man because... Yeah, the frustration is not like me wanting a man who can't get one. It's like they annoy me. Like on my Facebook thing, Facebook used to block me. I get so much penises in my inbox. Oh, as soon kid. as they say hello, as soon as they say hello and I say you need hi. Some guidance. You you need some I don't guidance. need guidance. I, no, no, no. I don't need, I know what I want. <laughs> no, 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 no. I know that's the problem. When I used to just want every and anybody, I was getting mad. But now that I sent a standard, yeah, of what I want, I realize that these men that they, they still want the things that the boys want. Yeah, they still want to see you on the first date. They still want to put their tongue down your throat. They still want to get to know you, but while bedding you, you understand? And I'm like, I've been there. This is not what I want. The frustration is not getting, um, because Facebook is full of them, right? Internet is full of them. You can get one for every day. But grown women, um, uh, most grown women don't want a hookup don't want a guy going to the strip club don't want a guy that's still going out with his friends abroad on holiday and you don't understand and i realize that most men because i don't see all of them are still into it right okay shalomi so, can i just say you're, you're gonna you're gonna struggle because most men even into the 80s still want to go away with the boys most men still want to go away with the boys we we like our we like our boy time. We you know. It, uh, oh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, I'm just gonna come in because we've only got four minutes left of the show, which means that I do have to log off of the uh, radio because the radio is still running. So I just wanted to kind of put a fork in the road. But we have had some comments on Facebook that need to be read out. So what I'm going to do, I want you to hold what you're saying. I'm going to read this out. Then I'm going to let the www dot go. And then we're going to come back and we are going to end. Or I'm going to maybe give 10, 15 minutes and then it's cut time. All right. So um, um, we had a message. Um, Hold on. We had a message from... Uh, a t a Johnny Mir, he's from America, and um, he said that from the comments, let me just find it, I don't know where it's gone again, but it was such a good comment. If anyone can find, oh, here it goes, right. He said, we as men are supposed to take care of our women. These brothers seem to want their mother and not a partner, right? That's what he said. Okay. Um, this is guy from America saying that to the British guys. This is this is this is really? a grown. This is a grown. I think he's a grown man. America. This is what yeah, he's saying. Look, 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 we can chat about the man in America. He, no, he lived. He he actually lived here. Um, he's, yeah. he's he's just stationed in America at the moment. So, um, so he also said, and the reason why I'm picking this out is because he's it's a man, right? Because the women. The women are saying stuff, Jenny Ingram Brown is saying, are men looking for true commitment or just to have fun? Um, I'm just going through. Dr. Phil says, no man, no man of 80 wants to buy 
a trip. They can actually have a lot of time with it. No man of 80 uh, do want to buy a trip. <laughs> they actually love time with their grandchildren. I think what he's saying about a man of 80 is not going to be going on, on no trip. He'd like to, most men of that age would want to spend time with their grandchildren. Um, Jenny is saying Ge geographical location makes no difference. Um, so basically a lot of the women are agreeing with with Johnny and uh, Pastor Phil, uh, is it Pastor? Dr. Phil, sorry. Um, and um, yeah, so basically they, they have, those men, those two men have addressed you guys in there. So we are now at 59 minutes. So guys, I want to thank you, those of you who are on the www. I want to thank you for joining Conversations After Dark. We will be back here next week uh, between the hours of 10 and midnight. And if you are a man who would like to come and be in the Zoom room, if you found that you've been shouting at the radio, you've been shouting at the, the, the laptop, then we would love to have you here. Please do join us between the hours of 8 and 10. Thank you and good night. A few minutes, right? Okay. So those of you on Facebook and Zoom, stay where you are. I'm just going to do what I need to do. And we are back. Okay, guys. So thank you for holding on. Thank you for, for taking that moment so we are now off the ww dot it's just zoom and facebook and we have just 10 to 15 we've got 10 minutes of talking five minutes to wind down okay and then we'll be back next week so um tony come back in sorry to, that i had to cut you there um come back in and and finish off really quickly what you were saying I've totally forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Um, I've totally forgotten. <laughs> Look, all right, while you try to remember, Barbara Car Carriman is saying, I'm so itching to get in that room next time. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Jenny Ingram saying, interesting discussion. It's a shame I only caught the last few minutes. Jenny, we are here every week between the hours of 10 and midnight. So do join us, do get involved. Um, uh, um, Lorraine is saying, Tony has said two different shows now about the lads going on a boys trip. Oh yeah, because you mentioned it before. You did mention it on another We love that. Yeah, we love that. I'll go on a girl's holiday every single year. It's not just for the damn man them. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And this is an important factor which Shalom is, is, is losing. I, I, I love my woman, but I need my space. As you said, I'm responsible for my happiness. I need to go to the football every now and again and watch my team and absolutely salivate over 11 men running around the pitch because they're gods to me, yeah? And my children are the same. They love going to the football and we have a great time because we lose it, yeah? And when we get home, we get back involved with the mum. But there's times when a man needs to have man interaction, yeah? And women are the same. You need to have your women interaction. That's why girls have girly trips, yeah? Have you seen the film Girl Trip? Yeah. Thank you, Tony. Love said. Come in, Lorraine. Thanks, Tony. I just wanted to say, I'm glad Tony said that he'd like to go football and man's trip and all of these things. Because from, I don't know Tony personally, but what I've heard him say over the weeks, if he was my man, I'd be pushing him to go football. I'd be pushing him to go on holiday because I would not be able to take being around him 24 <laughs> seven, my darling. Oh, listen. <laughs> Have to get listen. I've got to order this mic. Some of the lyrics that come out of this show is, is hilarious. We need gold. Look, got a proper golden mic as well over there. I've got one for my birthday, but I need one for this show because it's just great. 
absolutely great absolutely love it love it love it i think i think <laughs> i do who's that laughing someone's really geeky i'll be telling tony tony don't go on a point trip for a week go for three go for three weeks tony i'll pick up my foot and relax you moaning all the time about how you want your dinner cooked so you, you see, look, you, you, fall, you put, you put, Lorraine, you're giving false representation because me is the cook. I'm the cook. A false representation. I've never said I would want a woman to cook for me. I'm a cook. You keep putting me. You're the one that keeps going on about it all the time. So I've never ever said, I've never ever said I want a woman to cook for me because I'm a cook. Tony, cook. Maybe I might have got that one bit wrong. <laughs> but listen, I've listened to you say how you pay for your woman to take her here. You took her on holiday. Oh, it sounds like to me, the way you bring it up, it's like you're all dashing it in her face. So me, I would let you take me nowhere and I would be pushing you right out the door. Good for you. Lovely. <laughs> all right, so let's move on. Let's I move on there. Huh? Huh? <laughs> I didn't say it, Tony. I didn't say it. Yeah. But um after listening, I really want to see some other men because Tony, I know you like to go with your boys. Footballs, I don't mind because I like balls. Period. Whatever balls I'm on it. So the football thing I could join in, but the week you talk about going away with your guys, like it's regular thing. You honestly it's serious the, thing. So why would you have two nice cities to play with and go with your boys on holiday all the time? Why? Should I say that again? No. I, say I that again? Repeat it. No. <laughs> I won't, no, no, no. I won't repeat it. But how often do you go away with your boys? Every year. Yeah. Once a year. Every but year. Once, once a, a year, year. But you talk as if it's like almost every weekend or uh, you're yeah. always doing something every weekend. And so how you say it? Like but you never asked me. You never asked no, you, me. No, so now you know the it. answer. I got now you know the I, answer. Um, if you go on holiday three times a year, one of my trips is with the boys. Okay. Yeah, I, so is the woman allowed to come? No, it's a boys' trip. Have you not seen the film oh, Girl Trip? Oh, it's a boys. It's a boy, but oh, Have you not understand seen the film now. Girl trip? Right. Oh, it's a boys' trip. I understand okay. now. Oh, that's so, all right. I understand. You said it. It's a boys' trip. I understand. Oh, that's all right then. You you said it. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, so I think I think it's down to perception as well. We have to look at our own perception of how we perceive what people say, right? So, but this, this you know, this this has just been hilarious. Listen to my words, Lorraine. <laughs> Listen to my words. <laughs> I think I think Lorraine has listened to your words. That's why you responded in that way. <laughs> anyway. You know, we've got some we've got some good feedback here, guys. Guys, we've got some good feedback here. Listen, this show was supposed to be about compatibility, and we did go off, we brought it back, but it's it again, it went somewhere else. But it's been good, and it's I think we, from what we've got on this thread here is that it's been very informative, and the people are on the, the Facebook, they are interactive and they are having a good time. Um, Faye, Faye Thomas Green says she don't want no man on her girls trip and this is true and I, I have to back you up there Faye I'm um, with you 100% I think I think it is good it's healthy for, for men to go away with men I think it's healthy Amen. for women to go away with women I think, Amen. I think that in relationships there must be a balance of that Amen. If, if a man if a woman's going out all the time with her friends that's an issue if a man is going out all the time with his friends that's also an issue there must be balance or some kind of harmony in amen um yes sir oh yeah lorraine said remember last week tony wanted to know if i traveled to make it rain <laughs> remember that tony yeah you was a bit hot last week and you took your top off as well <laughs> <laughs> I Kelly, on you missed that. You missed it last week. Oh, okay. My guy was taking off his oh, yeah. so, Lorraine, last week. I, 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 I think Lorraine has, has given up on me on that one. So, 
Listen, that, guys. That, that boat, that boat has sailed. <laughs> oh gosh! Listen, guys. I want to thank you. We we have come to the end of the show, right? But what I want to ask you to do, guys, I want you to, like I said last week, and Kelly wasn't here, and I did message Kelly on to let him know the opportunity. And those of you who are on Facebook, the opportunity has come to make this into a show, uh, as a more of a on an online TV show. It has come up. So I'm in negotiations with that at the moment. And as I said last week, I want to know if you guys are uh, prepared. We will have to come up with a, um, a, a panel and it, will, and it could be a panel that rotates on a weekly basis of different people or you can be in the panel every week. I, I just want to know how you guys are feeling, but also what I'm asking you guys and those of you who are on Facebook, what I'm asking you to do is to share this, share it, share it, get your friends involved, just share it on your platform and get people engaged in this because we have the opportunity to do something quite different here. There is no other chat show like this, none, on mainstream TV or anywhere else. There's nothing like this. And so we have the opportunity to take this quite far. All right. So opportunities are coming. And tomorrow at, did I say three o'clock? I think I said three o'clock. Tomorrow at three o'clock, I'm going to have an announcement. It's, it's, it's just a thing that's happening on Monday, but I will, I'm having to ground myself because I got really excited today. Really excited with um, some things that are happening. Um, so on tomorrow it's just an announcement i'm going to be interviewing somebody a well-known somebody i'm just going to say that on monday and i so what's the reg what was the reggae music thing you'll know on monday on, you'll know tomorrow you'll know tomorrow what it is yeah so there's a lot of things in the pipeline and i'm just like you know when you say things, and I want to, I just want to say this, guys, as you're listening, I, at the beginning of the month, I said that May is the month of multiple manifestations and that we have the power as people to speak things into existence. We are powerful. We're full of power. We come from a creative source, so we are able to create. And so the amount of manifestations that have happened this month has been incredible it's been off it's just blown my brain and today's thing was just like okay and it's like you know when somebody just gives you a plate of food and you're not even expecting it you didn't see it coming you didn't smell the food you did nothing it's just there you go here yeah, this is for you and so we have a few more days left of may manifest you have the ability every single person under the sound of my voice has the ability to manifest what they want for their good think about what you want set an intention and put it out speak it into the atmosphere life and death is in the power of your mouth speak it over yourself and bring Lorraine, can something. i see lorraine on the pole <laughs> <laughs> Let, come along. <laughs> I'm morning. See oh, morning. if it was a phone call this morning. morning. Show oh, us how you work it, girl. You work that, girl. You get on the phone, girl. You get on the phone, girl. You get on the phone, girl. Where is it? I was I like, is that a phone? I can't. Ray, you've just shown us a potential ability there that we must see on screen. Wind us down, girl. Wind us down. We want to see it. That's right. And can I say, by the way, Cheryl, yeah, I don't know what you've done with your hair, but you look lovely. Yeah, you do actually, Lorraine. You can see the pole Thank all you. day long, but you won't see me on it. Well, I'll tell you what, if it's there, love, so it's how you use it. You work it, girl, you work it. You're not deserving, sorry. Where You guys are giving me jokes tonight. Oh, my God. <laughs> The banter is real on this show not tonight. Deserving. It really is. You're not deserving. <laughs> there you go. Come on, wind us down for five minutes, girl. Come on, wind us down five minutes of winding down. Come on, Lorraine. Work you that pole, girl. Said, you work it. Said, work that pole, girl. Work it. She said you're not deserving. When I see you do no. something for a woman, then the woman will do something for you. Well, I don't think it's that kind of game, though, Lorraine. To be with you. I just saw a poll and said, just show us how you work it. That's all. It's Listen, there, isn't it? It's there to be worked. 
hang on a second. So how, how did that poll come into the conversation? Exactly. The she showed week? us the poll. She what, actually, what, what, what did I she say got a camera that made and went all that. around her room and showed us the poll. Of course, man's going to be asking her to work that poll. That poll is there because it worked. He he asked me. Why showed it. Why did you he show the poll? He me if I can make it rain. So I'm showing I can, but I choose not to. This oh. is about compatibility. Well, no, that, I don't even know how this that came up in conversation last week. So let's go back to that. Yeah, how, you, did, how did the poll come in last week? Though? You know what? You have to watch last week's show. You, but you did. You said you asked the rain. Could you? Could she make it rain for you or something? That like was that. after the show. That was after the show when I was looking down the comments. Uh, no, it was in, it the, show. in the show. It, it was, was at the end. The show. It was at the end of the show. No, it was in the show. It was in the show. That was jokes. Go, Shalomi. Go on, tell me. That was jokes. Tony. Oh. Yeah, Boy, you were gonna get it, man. You see, you were something was lined up for you in a Tony. Something was like, but you went off. You see, Lauren had it in for you. You see, she even told you the poll. You were gonna get what you want, Tony. Tony, you have to go back, think about certain things, and said, you know what? I need to rearrange. Come on now, Tony. The poll was there. <laughs> you were like, you were like last week. You were like, let it. Come on, make it rain. Okay, okay, okay. It was gonna rain for you, Tony. Tony, you All need right. every week something happen for you, Tony. But yeah. guess what? You keep doing. You What's keep that? missing. You have the right back, but you keep missing the ball. Why? You have the oh, right dear. size. Back, and Tony, Shalomi, but you keep Shalomi. It. Last week when yeah. he asked me to make it rain, he didn't even know I had a pole. He didn't even know. So I'll be there. there you be. Yeah, okay. man. Okay. Okay. Hey, look, no, look, at, look no. at Kelly and smile, man. Nice. Look at Kelly and smile. Nice, guys, now we guys. know things. You see, that's how that's how women operate, yeah. You don't show a man, and then all of a sudden we're just like, Whoa. well, listen, <laughs> we will, we will, we will pick this up Wednesday <laughs> at ten o'clock. Please, guys, come on time. Please be in the room. Jesus, it get hot in here. You see, you, when you were hot last week, you took your clothes off, didn't you? Oh Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Listen, it's time to go. You know, Facebook is just laughing, laughing, laughing. Listen, we'll be back here next week. Now, next week, I would really like to have a panel of men. Johnny Meyer, if you are available, I would love to have you on the panel. Dr. Philip, I would love to have you on the panel. Um, Tony and Kelly on again. Always, there's always space. Um, Patrick's gone back to work, so he's no longer able to come because he's now back to work. Um, but guys, those of you who are here, who are listening, if you would be willing to be on the panel, next week's show will be absolutely incredible. We will do half the show with you guys in the panel by yourselves, because I think it's time for us to hear from the men. And then at the next hour, we will bring some of the women in and we will open up the discussion. How does that sound? I think that it will... No, yeah, I've got thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. I think that that would be a really good show. Yeah? Okay. And we will continue um, with, with the subject. Um, but for now, for now, I want to wish everybody a good night. I want to thank everybody for their input. Those who are in the panel, I love you lots. Thank you so much for your contribution. For those of you who are on Facebook, listen, go tell your friend them and make sure to come back next week. Bring more people, share this. You've got it on your Facebook feed. Share, 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 because we want to take this. We want to take this far. We want to create something from this. All right? Okay, guys. So I'm wishing you a good night. God bless. Stay safe. Enough love. Ciao. Good night, everyone. Bye. 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 Good night. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night. 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 Good Good night, Ryan. Ciao. Ciao. Bye, Ruth. See ya. Bye, everybody.